Welcome to Witness Wednesday here on the Walk Boldly with Jesus podcast. I'm your host, Katherine Duggan. However, each Wednesday, I will have a guest give their witness of how God is working in their lives. Hearing how God is working in other people's lives shows us how deeply He cares for each one of us individually. Listening to these experiences will help your faith grow. I am so blessed to be able to share these with you. Let's get started. The witness today is Eileen M. Eileen gave her witness as part of a talk for the Life in the Spirit seminar. Eileen's talk today is on salvation. She talks about where God took her from and where he brought her to. She is no longer even remotely the same person that she was before. I know you will really enjoy her testimony. Take it away, Eileen. I am just so grateful to have this opportunity to share what God does for his people, for the people he loves, for the people he created for himself. It took me right back to the very beginning that uh, to go through the salvation that God brought to me, where he took me from, and how he made me whole. He really... Um, changed my whole life. It changed everything. Salvation is everything. I have a whole new life. I am not even remotely close to the person I was. And I'm so grateful for that and for all the ways that he's taken me in that journey. When I was thinking about what to do, I was thinking about the way the world is now because Christ created us to be in relationship with him, to live a life with him, to be a part of him, that we would have a relationship, conversations, and be with each other and acknowledge each other. And um, he you know, he's pretty smart. He kind of knew when he created Adam and Eve that we weren't going to make it. There was going to be a fall, and that wasn't going to happen for us. And yet he created us anyway. And he created us saying, I will give them a way out of this. I will find a way for them to come close to me so that we can have a relationship. And that's what he did. You know, maybe not right away, but that's what he did when he came. And that changes everything. It changes the whole world. The dates that we use for the years is based on when he lived. It changed everybody. Most of the laws that we have are created out of the morality of the Bible. Everybody wants to be treated the way they tell you to treat people. We are a fallen people, though. We are fallen. We sin. We fail. We screw up. We do all kinds of things. We have all kinds of failures, all kinds of predispositions. And there's still a way out of that. You know, there's always, there's always a way. He will always give you a hand up or help out or whatever you need. Originally, I was going to talk about the way the world is, the shape the world is in, and all the things that are going on. But in just the last couple of days, it's really turned to the truth and what the truth is. And when you look in the world now, everything is so subjective, all of it. You know, somebody can tell you this and they'll say, well, this is my truth, or this is the way I see it, and this is what it is. And don't tell me I'm wrong, because it's not. And there's just no room for anything. That division, that split, only comes from the enemy. It only comes from the devil himself, and he comes to destroy. He comes to deceive, he comes to confuse, he comes to wreck your life. He comes to take you out of a right relationship with God in any way that he can do that. And he said, to, he, know, he, he may not know how we think, but he does know what you do and the things that attract you and the things that you'd like and the things you might want. And those are the things he sets out doing. Just like he did it to Jesus, when Jesus, after the 40 days fasted, he was hungry. He knew that. And he said, you can turn these stones into bread. And Jesus said, no, that isn't it. But doesn't he do that to us when we're hungry, when we need something? Aren't we looking for the way to get it? Aren't we just really looking for it? And that's when the enemy will come in and say, don't just take this one over here, or you could do this. Or how about that? 
it's only a little compromise. You're not really selling yourself short. Depending on how big, I mean, he could go big. He could go for the jugular. But for, I think for people that know, for really Christians, he just takes you a little bit off the mark. And you think, well, it was only a small thing. It was only this and that. Those things all add up, and it creates... It creates a, a division. Of, it, it separates you. It separates you from the love of God. Because he expects a lot from us. He wants us to be like him with his love for people, with his love for everybody, that we can be there for them. But we don't have it. We just don't have it. Unless we ask for a helper, the Holy Spirit will come and it will lighten up all the dark areas. He will lighten up whatever it is that's blocking your path to them, whatever it is. He will shine a light on it, and he will show you another way, even just, even if it's just a slight thing. And he takes you in the gentlest possible way. He will just show you this, look this way, just look this way. And you look that way, and then you say, oh, and then there's this. And that he'll just take you along the path so that you can go to where he wants to get you. Sometimes he'll come in and just go, whoop, it's done. Rare. It doesn't happen all that much. But he does do that. That's how good God is. And that's how tricky the devil is, too, because it doesn't take much to just put you off the mark, to just compromise a little bit, to just say, okay, I'm going to do this. Oh, granted, I did cheat a little there. But nobody's going to notice, and I'm sorry anyway. And all, all of that undermines what the spirit is doing because it puts a wedge in there. It draws you away, and it, once you make a little compromise, you're willing to do it again and again because that's what sin does to you. It changes your perspective. The Holy Spirit, on the other hand, will light up everything you need to know, and all you have to do is ask. Just ask. If you say, I need to be better at my prayer life, ask, because it will happen. If you need to be more attentive to uh, certain situations, just ask. Whatever you need, you only have to ask. Whatever um, <laughs> obstacles are in your way, whatever's keeping you, especially if you ask for spiritual blessings, it's going to be there for you. If you just need to pray more, if you just need to be open more, if you need to understand the Mass, if you need to understand Scripture, whatever you need, ask. Even to the simplest things, if you just need a ride or a parking space, ask, what the heck? It's going to happen or it won't. Because everything happens the way God wants it to. And he loves you that much that he's willing to do the little things. When Jenny said... He's even interested in your hangnails. It's every little detail. Every little detail. Thank God. I just want to, I want to share um, a thing that he did for me when I first came to the Lord. I thought he made a mistake. I thought it must have been a real mistake. And I kept thinking that, you know, this, you know, this, it's not what I should be doing. And every time I opened the scriptures, I opened up to Isaiah 43. But now says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he formed you, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. And I looked at that, and I thought, this has got to be for someone else. <laughs> when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow. And when you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. Neither shall the flame Kindle upon me. For I am your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I have given Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in return, since you are precious in my sight and honorable, and I have loved you. Therefore, I will give men for you and peoples for your life. And I looked at that and I thought, ah, that's not for me. It's not for me. I don't know who he's talking about, but it's not for me. And every time I open my Bible, it opened to Isaiah 43. Every time. For weeks. 
And I kept looking at it going, man, is he trying to say something to me? I, it took me too long. And, um, and then finally I said, maybe it is for me. Maybe he is saying that to me. Wouldn't that be something if he was saying that to me? And he was. And I stayed with it. And he changed my whole life. From there I said, Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna think about this. I'll think that maybe this is where I'm supposed to go. And then after that he gave me Psalm ninety one, which is similar in that way that he is there for you. And um very slowly, very slowly I progress, but you know, we wait on the Lord. He does it. He's the one that does it all. And I, I can't even stress enough how different my life is than, than it was because I was, man, I was a party girl. I've been with the Lord for nearly 40 years, so I mean, I was just really, and that was done. That was over. And I had said, you know, when you think, I was saying to my friends, you know, couldn't we go bowling or something? Couldn't we just go to a movie rather than just going out all the time? I could barely get myself home. I was done with that. And they looked at me like I was crazy. And I thought, no, no, I got, I, I got to try something else. And that's when God stepped in. I didn't even ask. He honors your heart, and he's there for you. And he will change everything, and he will provide for you in the greatest way. My husband and I, we, we, we decided to live on what God provides for us when we got married. And um, we've been doing that for over 30 years. And we don't have a lot, but we have never needed anything. Wow. Anything that we need, we've gotten. We live a simple life, but we have what we need. I just can't encourage you enough to go with the Lord. Try Jesus. Go with everything that he has to offer. It is so worth it. It is so life-changing. And then you get eternal life afterwards. What's not to take? <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing your testimony with us, Eileen. Salvation is such an important topic, and yet is one many of us like to avoid. You did a great job showing us how the enemy likes to get in and divide us. He likes to make us think there is no right or wrong. The enemy likes to try and convince us that our sins aren't that bad, that it's okay to compromise ourselves for what we want. Thank you for sharing your story and reminding us that our sin separates us from God. And yet, we can just ask God for what we need and he will help us get it. Thank you again. We have all seen God working in our lives. However, we might not all be aware it is God who is working in our lives. This is why it's so important we start talking about it more. The more we share our experiences, the more people understand how God works and how much he truly loves us. If you would be willing to share any of your experiences of how God has worked in your life, please email me at Catherine at findingtruenorthcoaching.com C-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-E at findingtruenorthcoaching.com or you can click on the link below. It won't take up much of your time and your story could be just the story someone needs to hear today. Please prayerfully consider sharing your story. Everyone has one and the world needs to hear them. I look forward to spending time with you again tomorrow. Remember, Jesus loves you, and so do I. I will have another witness for you next Wednesday. Have a blessed day.